Agile leadership is a term we're hearing more and more of these days, generally referring to a focus on helping people and teams be more adaptive and effective in the dynamic business environments that they find themselves working in. But what does it actually take to be an Agile leader? I'm thrilled today to be joined by Molly Brown Pickett, who is going to help us discuss just this. Casually describing herself as a learning lady, we know from her stellar and varied career that she is great at creating and leading successful teams, ensuring that they deliver on their objectives. Based in California, we're also hugely grateful that she has flexed her diary to speak with us today. Molly, thank you very much for joining us. Of course, Dan. Great to be here. Well, it's lovely to have you here. And I'm going to um, start with our favorite question that we we open with all with all of our guests, which is a little bit of a challenge, it seems, because I don't think anybody's managed to uh, to get there yet. But <laughs> has to tell us about yourself in 60 seconds. Great. Cut me off. Tell me if I hit the goal. <laughs> um, first and foremost, I, I can't help but say uh, I'm a mom of three and a wife. So I have a 12-year-old daughter, a 10-year-old son, and a three-year-old son. And my husband and I live in uh, Sunnyvale, California, which is the heart of the Silicon Valley. We moved here eight years ago for uh, my first job in the tech industry. And I would just say I'm a lady trying to lead a healthy family and help create healthy organizations. Um, and I just love life. Did nice. I do it? Was I think you did. I think you were right. uh, less than 60 seconds. You did very All right. well. <laughs> um, I was, I, wait, I'm glad you brought up the tech industry because that kind of leads nicely into my next question, which is because I was taking a, a look at your LinkedIn profile before this sure. call. And I noticed that you, you've worked for quite a few agile tech organizations, starting like with Meta and LinkedIn being a couple of them. And also the 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 Walt Disney Company and they're all constantly evolving. They're they've kind of organizations that have embraced ambiguity and and I guess thriving in our uncertain world. So what what do you see as a, a kind of the common characteristics of agile organizations? And having spent much of your career working in them, would you class yourself as an agile leader? Yeah, this was fun to think about as a question because I have felt like there was no life before working in tech. It's an all-consuming industry and pace and very interesting, and I love working in tech, but thinking of my previous organizations as Agile was also fun. Um, I would say what I've noticed over the years for these organizations that have continued to thrive over time and change is uh, a strong values-based uh, culture and mission. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I learned about organizations is the first rule is to stay alive. So I guess maybe agile is like how fast you're changing um, mm -hmm. and evolving. So the places that I've worked are all still around. And I do um, just think that they're each on a different trajectory for how quickly they change and, and, and how um, big they are and therefore how uh, all encompassing the change can be. But when there's this strong set of values often created by the founder and then kept alive by the subsequent layers of leaders and um, teams within an organization, I think that they are able to kind of stay true to who they are and stay alive but then also change with the times well yeah i mean if we were to define uh, agile leadership as being more about having a sort of creative mindset and aiming to remove those blockers that stop employees working effectively and productively do you think there's a like a best style of leadership to lead an agile team like how does how does your leadership help to support employees and drive better business outcomes as a result yeah, I think so. Definitely. I think um, finding a rhythm uh, that's natural for the employees has seemed to be a really powerful step a leader can take so that uh, there is flow and a chance to focus and a chance to reflect and a chance to start and stop. So a lot of times I'm seeing that happen through uh, real life annual goals or quarterly cadences. Uh, I personally have found a lot of success running my team in a monthly kind of rhythm where we start each month with a fresh take on how we're going to hit our quarterly and annual goals and kind of um, chunk our work into shorter sprints. Uh, I find that this is sort of uh, in line with natural rhythms too. If you think about 
seasons and holidays and just humans existing. They kind of like having things to look forward to and having closure and celebrations. And if you can bring that kind of rhythmic nature to the organization, I think it helps people deal with chaos, uh, change, um, and, and feel a little bit more in control in this kind of mad, mad world, if you will. Uh, it feels, uh, it sounds very uh, similar to being a parent of three children, I would imagine as well. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities. Yeah. Uh, yeah I've, you've, you've headed up um, learning functions throughout your career um, and currently working for Asana, a software company whose aim is to help the world's teams work effortlessly together. And you work there as, as head of people development. I, I'm guessing you, you're a leader who delivers leadership development and is what, so I, my question is what's, what's helped you to learn to become, to become a good leader? How have you, how have you used that in order to help create new leaders? Sure. There's a lot of things. Uh, I, I definitely like this concept of sort of running my team like a business. And therefore I think when um, team leaders do that, they're, putting themselves in the shoes of their company leaders and using similar practices to what their company leaders need to do. And therefore it kind of trickles down into their team. So I've always loved to uh, ensure that my team has a strategy and structure and process and people strategy and rewards and recognition within the team. Uh, that's one. I think another, um, case or you know leadership trend that i'm seeing is to ensure like this continuous high performance um that becomes um less uh that it's a little bit faster so humans and especially as uh the newer generations are entering the workforce are are ready to to move with um a little bit of a clip maybe it's in tech but mm. Uh, we're asking our managers to ensure that there are goals constantly set and that they're aligned with the organization, that like feedback and coaching is happening regularly, um, that evaluation and review of work is ongoing and rewards and recognition. And so we're seeing our teams pull this out of formal company-wide uh, performance cycles and start doing it more regularly within their work group and more frequently. Um, you know, it all starts with great one-on-ones in tech. Uh, we really, we really put a lot of um, attention on individual relationships. I think that also, finally, uh, as a team leader, we're needing to be more inclusive. There's a lot of uh, different humans in the workforce, and we're serving a diverse uh, customer population. And so the more a manager or a team leader or a leader can be inclusive, um, the higher performing their team is and the better results. And again, um, we're seeing that that really all starts with kind of individual relationships and just simply listening to understand what it's like to be another person. What does it feel like to lead an effective team in an agile organization to be to kind of help them with that end goal of becoming high performing? How have you led that process in the past? And do you think that, that what tips have you got maybe to to that you see are needed to help that consistency? Sure. Well, let's see. I think the team leader um, sets the tone and uh, the pace. And so there's a lot of uh, pressure to be a good leader. And so mm -hmm. I do think uh, the leader needs to step into that role of leader leadership and, and study what it means to be a leader. And then I think also within the team, you need leaders because it can't all just be the team leader. You need each person to kind of step into this space of uh, being uh, a, a leader. I played uh, soccer here in America. I know football where you come from <laughs> um, all through my life. And I really just keep seeing the theme of like being on a soccer team, you're, you're on a team and you all want to win and mm. you each play a position, but you can kind of flex into other people's positions when you need to. And there's substitutes and there's different strategies for different matches and Maybe the people in your league or your country are playing other leagues or other countries. So you kind of quickly form other alliances and teams. So there's just so much uh, in that game that I find is similar to leading in an agile organization. You kind of need your, your, your skills and your structure, but then you need to be flexible. Um, I think 
I could go on and on. I think with my team members, asking them to uh, work with each other um, more and more, as opposed to escalating things to the team leader is, is, is helping a team be effective. And Asana does help us with that. So the more we can do work um, out loud, uh, asynchronously, mm -hmm. um, then the more people can be involved and more troubleshooting and problem solving and idea generation can happen. And then when we get together in uh, group settings, we kind of have this like pre-work already done and we then uh, work as a team and collaborate and come up with net new ideas. And as as a head of people development, mm -hmm. I guess there must be some some givens that always have to be included in an, a, an organizational development plan. But is there anything new? What what do you see is like any upcoming trends that we should be looking out for? Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot. Um, I, I just yesterday talked with my company about um, authorizing our employees to uh, use chat GPT as part of their work and right. how is that going to impact their, um, their learning and their work product and all of the, um, legal security, privacy, technological advances of our company. So there's a lot on my mind, um, mm -hmm. to keep it simple. I would say it's, uh, kind of democratizing a lot of things. So it's, uh, democratizing goal setting and democratizing learning and democratizing, um, work assignment, who's working on what project, democratizing jobs. It seems like there's a lot of sort of like removing bottlenecks to get people and data connected um, without sort of manufactured control points. And can I pick you up a little bit on the the kind of the inclusion of chat GPT there? Like what, sure. what, what can you give any specific examples of how you've maybe integrated AI, that type of technology into, into your kind of leadership practices? Yeah, sure. Thanks for asking. It's very new, um, but very present for me. And I'm trying to kind of stay calm uh, and yeah. know, know that I don't have to have it all figured out right away. But um, chat GPT came out uh, and came into my um, knowledge right when I was leading our company through the annual performance review program at my firm. Mm -hmm. And I just noticed uh, how quickly people were wondering if it was good or bad to use ChatGPT to help them write their peer and upward and manage their reviews. Um, is that okay? Is it right or wrong? Is it, does it help? Um, also questions came like, are we going to have written reviews in the future? Do we need written reviews in the future? Um, this type of, uh, performance management program is, is it even relevant anymore? Um, but then we just proceeded and, uh, people did what they did. And I really don't know what people did, but mm. I, um, have been experimenting with, um, safe data and putting kind of like, um, you know, harmless data, if you will, into chat GPT to see if it could help me. And I've seen instant uh, personal uh, results in terms of I can go faster when someone asks me a question and I need some sort of tool or framework that isn't like proprietary to my firm, but also before I would have maybe had to like curate content from all sorts of sources or make it up myself. Whereas I went to chat GPT and for example, I typed in uh, a framework for interviewing humans about their intent to stay at a company. And very quickly I got something that I was able to send to a colleague and it just met her expectations. And the time to give her that information was far less than it had been in the past. That's um, really interesting. And yeah. it's, it's interesting to kind of see how, how people are using it in a, like a real world application. Cause there's lots of kind of, that uh and it and it all comes back to this kind of agile leadership because you're right it's like this new thing that comes into our world and then suddenly kind of disrupts everything that we know um and it's and it's but there's still that like there's still that innate human ability to kind of make those decisions of like is this going to be is this going to work or is this going to not work and how like how do we weave it in but in the right way and all that kind of stuff so yeah that's, right. it's interesting to kind of hear like real world application is so what uh, what would you say is the best thing you're doing as a leader right now is it about dealing with a particular challenge or capitalizing on a new opportunity what what would you say yeah thanks for asking mm, i actually am very committed to ensuring that um, my team can deliver 
on the value proposition that we've promised our customers. And so with digital transformation, I've noticed how change can happen so quickly and I'm okay with that, but there can be a lack of uh, infrastructure or sustainability behind a change. And so um, I hate to uh, promise things and then not be able to deliver those over mm. time. So I'm quite proud of um, the sprint that we're doing this year at my team and um, to kind of put infrastructure behind all of our offerings so that we can build for growth and be growth ready and be change ready. So kind of a stable, simple, flexible infrastructure with data and room to collect data and synthesize data for making decisions is, is something that I think is probably really important for any leader to do. Although these podcasts are out there and this series is all about leadership, I can't leave here today and not ask you about your one of your family-run businesses, uh, uh. which is about <laughs> microbrewing, <laughs> which is, uh, I, uh, yeah, I would say is probably a bit of a passion of mine. Well, specifically the drinking uh, yeah, right, right, rather, right, than, right. <laughs> rather than the making. But um, so I've got two, this is a two-part question, which is firstly, how much does of a, of a kick does a Carolina Reaper pepper add to a beer? And secondly, <laughs> what similarities or differences do you experience in leading and working with family versus multinational organizations? Sure. Yeah, it was a spicy beer. Now, uh, my <laughs> colleagues who live in the Asia Pacific region, when I shared a beer with them, they thought it was nothing. And then I had some folks who aren't as used to spice think it was too spicy to drink. So yeah. if that helps, uh, it is the hottest pepper in the world, I believe. I sort of lost the stat on that. Um, but it, it was hot and it was a triple IPA too. So it was strong oh, okay. as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, family businesses, they've been awesome. Um, you know, I really, I have always kind of wanted to start a business, uh, mm. when I, when I learned about small businesses, but I never have had the courage. And, uh, mm. also I, I, I didn't have the funding. Um, but when I met my husband, he was a filmmaker. And so we made a micro budget movie and I kind of likened that to a small business. Um, and then we made the beer business and now we're needing to kind of like shore up our investments and we're working on a couple other creative projects, but no business active at the moment. I will say my daughter uh, just started a like sort of illegal cookie business in her middle school, um, which I think <laughs> is hilarious. And there are some similarities even with her. Um, and I'm trying to kind of keep my eyes shut and mouth closed about what's happening with her fellow 12 year olds. But, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's decision making and power dynamics that pop immediately. Um, who gets to make what decision? How many people do you need to ask and, and have way in? Um, mm. uh, that, that has popped immediately. I think, um, you know, storytelling and clarity of um, like kind of your values and what you're trying to do has popped immediately in these, in these small businesses and um, teamwork. Yeah. You, you need, you need uh, to figure it out so that you can, you can have an effective group of humans working together to achieve a mission. Sure. So my final question is um, the, the question, again, a question that we're asking everyone, which is, if you were starting again, starting your career from scratch, what what would be the best piece of advice that you would give yourself? Yeah, thanks. I think that finding someone that is not in your personal life, but also not in your work life to help you make sense of reality and uh, kind of call you on your own stuff and make you feel better when you're feeling down um, and kind of lift you up a little bit so that you can learn from work and then keep moving um, and being true to yourself would have been something I wish I would have done earlier in my life. So right now I have a talk therapist. Um, I don't, I, I actually am fine with a talk therapist and I'm exploring the difference between a talk therapist and a coach and when to use either. But even a talk therapist or a trusted mentor, which I found through my educational programs um, and kind of like more senior tenured professionals who can help me. Um, mentors are great. Just sort of like make sense of things that seem like a big deal to me. But when you pull back and get perspective, they're sort of like human patterns or organizational patterns. And um, it's okay. And you're okay. And like, what can you learn from it? And how can you move on faster? 
because uh, they don't go away. And the faster you learn how to deal with these things, uh, just the better life and career you can have faster. Yeah, I, that's great advice. And uh, I, I think we can all yeah, benefit from just having that little bit of mentorship from 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 a third party just to get help you give that. So that's here. Yeah, it's really good. Well, um, thank you very much, Molly, to you for joining thank us you. at a very early hour in, in your world. Hey, and uh, <laughs> and I, I, I look forward to, to coming over to California to sample both super spicy beer and uh, illegally made cookies. Um, all right i love it <laughs> you come anytime thanks dan well thank you very much for joining us today and um if you want to find out more about impact or you want to connect with molly or myself then please find the links all the links you need uh, in the description below thank you for listening and we'll see you again soon hey.